My people, welcome back to your favorite show, You and I Talk Show with Luis Uacho. This week, again, the unconventional multi-millionaire mindset. That's where we're taking you. My people, welcome back to you and I talk show. Today we have a great guest that you already know, Dan the Man. Thank you, Louis. Dan Locke, thank you so much for being back. Well, thank you for having me back. People loved you. Thank you. Thank like, you. We Appreciate need Dan that. back. You, you know, was it, so inspiring. It feels like home. <laughs> Second time feels like home. And then you're dressed so nice, you thank know. You. I feel so honored. It's so fresh. You're so fresh. Thank you. Thank you. So you are the unconventional millionaire. Mm. And today we're going to talk about the unconventional millionaire mindset because we were talking about mindset the other day. Yes. And then so today we're going to talk about your unconventional millionaire sure. mindset. And then we're going to talk about like the top five mm. success principles sure. that have gotten you to becoming a multi-millionaire. I love saying the fact that you're a multi-millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Is, it. It's like people talk about why, why unconventional wisdom because conventional wisdom is almost always wrong. You notice most people out there have a, a, a theory and that's called 97, 3%, 97, 3%. 97% of the people are dead or dead broke by the age of 65. Only 3% succeed. So if you think in terms of that's the ratio in, in a society, most people operate in that 97% category. So if you want to succeed, you want to study what the 3%, what do they do? What do they do differently? Uh -huh. And how do they think differently? Uh -huh. And you want to follow what they do. And if you follow what most people do, then that's conventional wisdom. Yeah. You get what they get. So you actually have to like ignore a lot of people. Yes. Ignore almost everybody that you know. I always tell them, like I tell people that whenever, because people love giving you advice. Mm -hmm. Our family, our friends, our relatives, they all want what's best for us. But I always say you want to consider the source. Do they have what you want? Do they have the lifestyle that you want? And consider the source. Have they been there and done that? And easy for them to give advice. But if you consider the source, are they coming from the 97% or are they coming from the 3%? This is why it's so interesting to talk to you because you have actually done the journey. Yeah. So for entrepreneurs who want to be serial entrepreneurs yes. and be multi-millionaires, yes. they can actually talk to somebody that has done it. Yes. So the top five, number one. I would say the first one is what I call the a millionaire mindset wealth principle is you want to think abundance, not scarcity. Mm -hmm. Think abundance, not scarcity. You notice when I say the word money, money is a very emotionally charged subject. You talk to anybody, you talk about money. Sometimes in a, in a social setting, you talk about money, they'll be like, ooh, yeah. you, know, you shouldn't talk about money. <laughs> yeah. and, and it would be like, why you talk about money? Yeah. Sometimes people tell me, like, why you talk about money all the time, Dan? Yeah. Uh, or when you, when you say money, people have a lot of, most people, have a lot of negative association with money, okay? When we grow up, people, our, you know, our parents would say what? Money doesn't grow on trees. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. Yes. Uh, rich people are greedy. They're not going to heaven. Yeah, they're, they're not gonna have it. They're just, they're not gonna have it. Yeah. And usually when people have a negative association with money or wealthy people or successful people or millionaires, if they have a negative association with prosperity, it's very difficult for them to have prosperity because in the, in the mind, that in the subconscious mind, if I, if I make a lot of money, it means I'm a bad person. Yes, nobody wants to be the bad rich guy that exactly. you know, everybody thinks that. Exactly, and yes. if I become successful, if I make a lot of money, it means uh, I'll lose my friends, it means people won't like me, it means people will view me in, in a different way. And they might, and they might. But because of this, so, most people have a scarcity mentality that they think it's a zero-sum game. Here's what I mean by that. They think if I make a dollar, it means somebody else has to lose a dollar. Like you're taking from somebody. Yeah, taking from somebody Because you else. always think that rich people are taking from somebody. Exactly. So if I make a dollar, somebody loses a dollar. If I win, somebody loses. Well, it's not true. Making money is not how it works because if you think in terms of money, it's infinite. 
it's infinite, that you can create wealth and create value now in the, in the marketplace. It's like, think in terms of, th there's this vast ocean out there that you believe, if you have a scarcity mentality, you know what, if I take this cup and I go to the ocean, I scoop a glass of water. If I take this glass of water and that the ocean will dry it up. Yeah. You would think that makes no sense. But that's how people think. Yeah. So number one, we think abundance. Abundance. Not scarcity. So you got to think like there's an ocean of money infinite, out there. Infinite money. And I just need to go swimming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you can buy into either belief. Uh-huh. There's a limited amount or there's an infinite amount. Mm -hmm. Which one is more helpful? Which one? Yeah. And then also, so do you have then to set a, a maximum to how much money you can make? Because no, because again, that comes from the scarcity mindset that when you have, when you make enough, sometimes people say, oh, why are you so greedy? Why do you want more? It's not about greedy. You notice anyone who has made a lot of money, who are very successful, that they still keep going. Bill Gates still works. Yeah. Warren Buffett still works. Yeah. They have more than enough money. Because I believe, and you don't have to buy my belief, but he's my belief, when you learn how to make money, it's actually a gift. You're actually morally obligated to make as much money as you can. Mm -hmm. Because it is a gift that you, could, you should use to the highest degree. And it's an ocean. It's an ocean. Oh, wow. Okay, we're going to take a short break and keep going. <laughs> when I talk show with Louise Wachu, we love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at watcher.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my abundant people, we're back. Okay, so one, abundance. Abundance. Two? I would say the second wealth principle is you want to think environment, not willpower. Environment. Not willpower. Not willpower. Most people sometimes, let me give you an analogy. Let's say they want to lose weight. Mm -hmm. And they believe, you know what, I want to lose weight, and I have this goal, and I'm going to use my willpower, I'm going to get up 6 a.m. in the morning, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to do all these things. And most people fail because they're relying on their own drive and their own willpower. Nothing wrong with that, but I always believe environment is more powerful than willpower. Mm -hmm. Imagine, I have a friend of mine who's been complaining about, hey, you know what, Dan, I want to quit smoking. Yeah. He's been talking about this for 10 years, <laughs> but he tried and he never succeed. Yeah. Why? Because his wife smokes. All his friends smoke. Okay. You're in that kind of environment. You yeah. are a product of the environment. Mm -hmm. If your friends smoke, your family smoke, it's kind of difficult. He said, you know, every time I try to quit, my wife would be like, hey, you know, let's, let's just have a smoke. <laughs> We're sharing. We're you know? sharing. Yeah, and this yeah. and that. Of course, it's very difficult. Yeah. So I always say, you know, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Mm -hmm. Show me the friends that you hang out with. Show me the books that you read, who you talk to on a daily basis. Show me your first five people that you spend the most time with. That's your future. Mm -hmm. So if you notice, if the five friends you hang around with most of the time, they're not where you want to be, then you might want to consider getting some new friends. Wow, this is so interesting because the environment, so what are you supposed to do? Like say goodbye to your friends and be like, you know what, this is a broke environment. <laughs> <laughs> I would say to a degree, yes. Uh -huh. uh, at the very least, spend less time with them. Mm -hmm. That you have a choice. That, you know what, these are my high school buddies. I mean, I have some friends who I hang out with, which is have fun, and they're not entrepreneurs or anything like that. Perfectly fine. But majority of my time, I spend with people that would pull me up, not drag me down. Yes. That they would inspire me, they would motivate me, they would challenge me. That, you know what, you can do better. Yeah. And, and they, they're always doing something great. You know, it's, it's really great that you say that because I've noticed that you hold your entrepreneurs uh, yes. meeting yes. at one of the best clubs in Vancouver, the yes. Vancouver Club. Yes. Is that one of the reasons why yep. you've chosen to hold it there? Because I want people to see and immerse themselves in an environment that is an environment of prosperity. That Vancouver Club is over 100 years old. Some of the most influential, powerful business people are are members of the club. I'll tell you a quick story. When I had no money, when I was just getting started in my career, uh, I would go to the Pan Pacific here. Yeah. And I would go, I'll go to the Fairmount. And I would go there because I had no money. But I would go there and I would work in that kind of environment. And then sometimes I would get a cup of tea. And it's, eventually I'd make a little bit more money. I can have lunch there. 
because I want to immerse myself in that kind of environment. Because yeah. guess what? The first time when I was young, when I go to in, into that kind of environment, I wasn't comfortable. Yeah. I was like, this is, maybe I don't deserve this. You know, I don't want to diss any Vancouver neighborhoods, but <laughs> back in the days when I started the show on mm. radio, I was working in a very bad neighborhood, mm. like Hastings and Maine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was such a bad neighborhood, yes. and so many like bad things happening in that neighborhood. Yes. And I remember somebody telling me, Louise, like, you want to be a multi-millionaire, you want to have a successful it's show, true. you're going to have to get out of that neighborhood. It's true. It's <laughs> but true. I didn't know Vancouver yet. I mm. thought it was downtown. It's downtown, right? But changing from that environment also yep. changed a lot because this is a different part of town that we're in. Because people just underestimate how powerful your environment is. So I want to put myself in an environment that is supportive of what I want to accomplish, my goals. So people hang around with, where I go, uh, everything. Yeah. I tell people, you know, if you want to close a deal, yeah. don't take them to Team Hortons. <laughs> no, no offense to Team Hortons, but yeah. you know, take them to a nicer place if yeah. you want to close a, a bigger deal. Uh -huh. Because people can see, you, you project confidence. Uh -huh. Take them to Fairmount, take them to a five-star hotel mm. and talk business there. Yeah. The way you dress, yes. it's, you, you, you know, thank you for a compliment. It's, I always say you can't get rich looking poor. No. <laughs> And you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Yeah. So the way you dress yeah. speaks a lot. Because that's also your environment. You're totally. putting yourself into totally. that beautiful environment yes. or not. And, and I always tell, when you, when you look good, you feel good. Mm -hmm. When you feel good, you perform better. Yes. So yeah, we could talk about a show. We could, I can be, wear jeans and stuff like that. I would not be as articulate. Yes. But when I look good, I feel good, you have more confidence. Yes. And everything flows. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. So before we go to the break, mm. number three. I would say that is think needs, not money. Think needs. Needs, not money. Not money. What Again, you, you the 97% 97, 97 of the time people want, I want to make more money. Mm -hmm. Everybody says, I want to make more money. Mm -hmm. Well, money doesn't come to you because you want it. Mm -hmm. Money doesn't come to you because you think you deserve it. That's not how it works. Money comes to you when you are solving a problem in the marketplace, when you're adding value to the marketplace. Money earned is a byproduct of value creation. So the more value you deliver, the more money you make. Now, if you subscribe to that principle, it means instead of chasing money, instead of, I want to make money, chase needs. Uh -huh. Entrepreneur, we're nothing more than, uh, we, we solve other people's problems at a profit. That's what we do. So when you chase needs and focus on what does people want, how can we help them solve a problem? So like Tesla, for example, yeah. electricity car. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a brand new concept. It's a very unique concept. It solves a problem in the marketplace in the world. Yeah. Well, then there you go. Elon Musk makes a lot of money. Yeah, that is so great because you should be thinking, most people are usually thinking, I need money, I need money. But you need to be thinking, what do people need Correct. so I can answer their needs yes. and then I'll make money. The funny thing is when you don't chase money, uh -huh. money comes to you. Oh, wow. When okay. you chase needs, money comes to you. Okay, money, let's take a break and you come back to us. <laughs> you and I talk show with Luis Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uachu.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my rich multi-millionaire billionaires, we're back. So think needs, not money. Not money. What's the number four? Number four, I would say, and he's one that I am a very firm believer in, and that is you want to think fast, not slow. Oh, how, like, how, okay. Think fast, not, in the new world, it's not the big fish that eats the small fish. It's the fast fish that eats the slow fish. Mm -hmm. You look at a lot of big companies now, it's been around many, many years, we can name so many of them, bankrupt, going out of business, huge, huge company. It's been around for many, many years because they are now, they're not ad adapting to this new world. They are still operating like a slow elephant versus companies or entrepreneurs that are flexible, that are quick. They, you know, they can, they can move. Mm -hmm. I, I say the f fast is the new big. Mm -hmm. Fast but is, is fast a new big. stable because people are always telling you, take it easy. Yes. You know, because you have far projections. Usually it's coming from 97%. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Seriously. Oh, you know, take it easy. Yeah. Don't stand out. Yeah. You know, slow down. Uh -huh. You're going too fast. Yeah, yeah. Usually, yeah. not even percent. Yeah, and then they telling you you gotta start at the bottom and yeah, and, and climb. then climb your way up yes. and, and climb the ladder. Yeah. It takes ten. I always say, climb the ladder. I, I don't want to climb the ladder. I, I want to take the elevator instead. <laughs> so it's a different way of thinking. That because growing up, we're conditioned to climb the ladder, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Growing up, we go to school, kindergarten, we go to high school. What? Grade one, grade two, grade three, grade 12. And then you get, go to college, yeah. you go to university. After then, then what? Well, then you get a job. Climb the corporate ladder and then, you know, slowly assistant and manager, senior manager, whatever, right? And then you go to 65 and then you retire. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. That's what we're conditioned to believe. Uh -huh. But my whole life, I'm not all. I'm not the smartest guy, but I, well, I always would disagree with that. But but, but <laughs> thank you. But I, I always implement faster than most. Mm -hmm. So I don't. If you think if the smartest people, the most intelligent people, if that's what it takes, then all the professors, all the PhD, they will all be millionaires. Mm -hmm. And they are not. Mm -hmm. So it's not how much you know. It's how fast you learned mm -hmm. and how fast you can implement. Okay, so like you will get a great information or a great idea, mm -hmm. and then you will put it into action. Whereas yes. other people may get a great idea and they'll be thinking and thinking about it. I'm, I'm sure uh, our audience is watching this. Uh -huh. They sometime in their life they had this idea. Wow, you know, isn't that cool that I could do that? But they didn't take action on it. And then a few years later, they see it on TV, they see it somewhere. Oh, I came up with that idea. Yeah, I had that idea. idea. Like, done. I wish <laughs> I had done it, right? Yeah. And then now that product made millions of dollars because they didn't act on it. Yeah. So it's not how much you know, it's how fast you can implement. Mm -hmm. That's why I tell people I read two to three books a week. I don't just read books, Luis, I use books. So when I read a book, my goal is not to memorize everything from the book or understand everything the author is talking about. My goal is to pick three ideas from the book that I can implement in the next seven days. Wow. Sometimes I get the three ideas mm -hmm. in the first two chapters. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get the three ideas just from the table of content. Once I get the three ideas, I close the book, I just take action. Wow. Yeah. That's so amazing. So in your business, can yes. you give people an example of a situation in which you had to act fast and then it benefited you so much? Let me give you an example. Many years ago, I was attending an internet marketing workshop two-day workshop, and the speaker was talking about, this many years ago, was talking about, you know, if you add this pop-up, you know what popped up this, right, yeah. at the time, you know, you would get more subscribers to your mailing list. I thought, what a great idea. So after the first day that evening, go back to my hotel room, I called up my webmaster, said, you know what, do this. Here's the code, here's the script, do it. Day two, I go back to the class with a couple hundred people. I said, hey, you know what, the instructor was saying if you add this pop-up, you would, you would get more subscribers. I did that last night and it doubled the amount of subscribers I get. And then the instructor was asking everybody else, who else did it? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. And I was the only guy and I yeah. was shocked. Yeah. And I was like, wow, you know what? That's the difference. While they're thinking of, because most of them are thinking, well, after two days, I'll go back to my business. I'll think about, it. no, by the time they're thinking, yeah. I'm already so many steps ahead. Yeah. Because I think that's also like a huge thing. People go to classes. Yes. They hear people, entrepreneurs yeah. speak, and they get motivational things. Yeah. But then how many people actually take action that's right it. away yes. and actually discover it for themselves? Yes. Wow. And most of that is the limiting belief mm -hmm. that's holding them back. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I don't know it enough. Maybe I need more information. Maybe I'm not ready. Maybe I'm not ready, and you'll never be ready. Yeah. Yeah. That's so amazing. Okay, so before we go for a break, let's start on the number five. Number five, and that is think resourceful, not resources. Resourceful? Not resources. Not resources. 97%. They're always waiting for the right time, the right people, the money, the permission, what experience, whatever it is they're waiting for when the timing is right, which will never be right to take any kind of action. They always say, you know what? I, I don't know enough people. I don't have any, enough experience. I, I don't have enough money. So I can't do this or I can't do that. Oh, okay, so you're saying pretty much like, be resourceful yourself. Figure out a way. Figure out a way. Yes. Don't wait to have all the resources that you need exactly. in order to make it happen. Instead of waiting for the right resources, be resourceful. So 97% they're thinking, well, there's, there's nothing I can do. Yeah. It's just the way it is. Un unconventional millionaire, there's always something we can do. There's always something always, we can do. Always, always a way. So how resourceful can you be? What does it require for somebody to be resourceful? What have you had to Very simple. Do? To be resourceful, 
it's just to reframe the questions we ask ourselves. Because thinking is nothing more than a series of questions. If you, say, if you make a statement and say, you know what, there's nothing I can do, your brain stops working. There's nothing you can do. Well, you know, how can I make this work even I have no money? Who already has the resources? Funny thing is, people always have this excuse, I don't have enough money to get started or start that business. Funny thing is, millionaires, we don't use our own money anyway. <laughs> we use other people's money. Yeah. We use the bank's money. So it has nothing to do with that. A lot of businesses that I started, I didn't use my own money. Mm -hmm. it, it's not about that. It's about putting together project and scenario that it's a win-win, being resourceful, thinking outside the box. Resources, you, everybody else has it. You can go get it. Wow. Okay, my people, let's take a short break and then come back to the end of this. You and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uwachu.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, we're back. We're heading towards the end with the man, Dan Locke. Thank you so much. Uh, so resourceful. Now, what are your future plans? I have a few missions in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is to impact a million entrepreneurs worldwide. But I'm thinking you're already impacting millions. Um, probably, I would say, tens of thousands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, not just someone who has, you know, watched one of my videos. Okay, yeah, because, yeah, a I million. Mean, uh, yeah. I, I want to, like, people ask me the question, how do you define that you've impacted a million people? It's very simple. Every time I get an email, every time I get a comment on, on my YouTube channel, and people say, you know what, this has helped me, I will print it out. And I'll put it in, I, in my, at my home, I have what I call a gratitude box. It's, it's like a box about this big. Every time I get that, I'll print it out, I'll put it in the box. That's considered one impact. When I have a million of this, probably put it in a storage somewhere, that's how I would know. I've impact one person. And I tell my wife the same thing. When I go yeah. at my funeral, yeah. bury this with me. Wow. That's my legacy. That is so, because you're already thinking about your legacy. Yeah. You, you have now passed, you know, people when entrepreneurs are struggling, trying to make it. Yeah. You're past that stage, now you're thinking about your legacy. Everybody has to go through that. We want to pay the bills, survival, and when you go through, beyond survival is comfort. When you're comfortable, you, you've got the house that you want, you've got the car that you want, you're comfortable. Then now you want to think beyond then, what's, what's, the, what's your purpose? Why are you even here? Mm -hmm. who, who can you impact? Mm -hmm. And if we're fortunate enough that at a young age, I'm successful and I'm still striving forward. I want to be more successful so I could do more. Um, and part of why I do interviews and all these things, I actually don't care about fame at all. But I know by having more attention, by having more influence, that's a currency, that I, I'm able to impact more people. Yes. That's the only way, that's why I want to do this. Yes, this is why you're so perfect for television, because <laughs> television you. makes you reach so many more exactly. people. Exactly, exactly. I heard you're working on your own TV project. TV project, yes. yes. And also one of my goals mm -hmm. uh, is to be on Dragon's Den. Mm -hmm. uh, I was talking, emailing the producer of Dragon's Den, I was saying, you know what? Why don't you have uh, a dragon that is uh, from, that's Asian? Yeah. That's a Chinese. Because that's where the real dragons are. You know, I'm thinking like, come on, you've got show. And, and you have, look at the, the Canada's population. Yeah. Almost 5 million people are from, from Asia. Yeah. So, and, so that would be pretty interesting. And also what I do day to day, it's that anyway. Invest in companies. I help companies grow. That's what I do in day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my goals as well, to be on Dragon's Den. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when an entrepreneur, when you're working with uh, other entrepreneurs, can you tell that they have been through these steps? Oh, very, very easy. Mm -hmm. If I meet someone, I just listen to the words they use, the language there. It tells me a lot about their belief. And I will know pretty much if they're going to make it or not. It's very, very simple. Mm -hmm. If they say, you know what, Dan, I want to be successful. I, I want to make all this money. But when I dig a little bit deeper, ask some questions, it always reveals their limiting belief. And nowadays, it's, I'm very intuitive. I can meet someone and I would know very quickly what holds them back, what are some of the inner conflicts they might have, yeah. and, and are they applying some of these principles. Most of them, they don't, most of the time, they don't apply. Yeah. Because it's not taught in our school. And like you said, it's unconventional. Most people would say, yeah, take it slow. Don't do fast, <laughs> right? It's limited. Yeah. It's not enough. It's yeah. a zero-sum game. Yeah. Think local. 
don't think too big. Yeah. I say think global, don't think local. Yeah. So a lot of that, and that challenges their belief, existing belief. And that's sometimes what is the most difficult thing, mm -hmm. is it's mental. That, that's a difficult part. You know, I have been to one of your sessions at yes. the Vancouver Club. You're yes. so amazing as Thank a you. speaker, as a teacher. You give yourself so much. I was so impressed. I was like, I can't <laughs> believe Dan is still talking. <laughs> <laughs> For like three hours. <laughs> yeah. For three hours. You I'm still up there. so much because here we did just the top five, but you had like 15 points. Yes. And I think before we end the show, because it's coming to an end, mm. I want to talk about one of them that you talked about, mm. which was so like, fascinating for me, the universe doesn't care about you. Yeah. Well, and I think most people sometimes, what they, they take, they procrastinate. They think, oh my God, if I fail, it's such a big deal. And in my home office, I have a, a picture of the universe on my wall. Every time I, I have a challenge, I have a problem, I look at the, I look at the picture. And the world is like this small, our planet. <laughs> and look at that, it's like, What's the big deal? Yeah. Like, it's I mean, so huge. It's so huge. Like, we're not even a dust yeah. in, in the whole universe. Yeah. It's not, so whatever decisions that we think is such a big deal, that, oh my God, like, it's going to be my reputation. You know what? 100 years later, dust. This dust. We're not going to be here. So enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. Here. And so what's the big deal? Yeah. Seriously, what's the big deal? Yeah. What is so bad about it? Yeah. So, you know, you, you succeed, you lose money, you, you, whatever, it doesn't matter. It surely doesn't matter. That's what I mean. Wow. So, um, once again, let's mention that you have your beautiful wife with you on set. Yes. <laughs> you guys are traveling together. Yes, yes. And in, in, in terms of relationships, I'm thinking when you're thinking abundance, this yes. is good for the relationship because you're yes. always getting more. I always say behind every successful man is a smarter woman. Mm -hmm. uh, I think relationship, I'm fortunate to have my wife. Jenny with me that she is my not just my wife but my partner my business partner she's she's there all the time and as you know with what I do sometimes like my schedule is so packed and I might not have like other husbands a lot of life you know work-life balance I don't believe in work-life balance anyway <laughs> I believe in work-life integration mm -hmm. so when I integrate what I do work and life so let's say in a few weeks I travel to Toronto I'll do some work there but also I'll take a couple of days off with my wife so that's how I kind of run my life now it's work-life integration <sighs> Dan, thank you so much. You. We're running towards the end, but we'll definitely have you back because you're so amazing and thank the you. audience loves you. Thank you. The unconventional multi-millionaire. Please keep inspiring us. Thank you. All right, my people, that's it for this week. Stay tuned. <laughs>